Okay guys, so this is uh, 6.3. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to be gra graphing and solving a system of linear equations. Or inequalities, sorry. So by systems, whoop, that means more than two, okay? So we're going to be looking at a few of these ones where we're going to be just basically graphing two lines now instead of one. And we're going to be shading in one common area. So it's not that big of a stretch. You're going to do the same thing, but instead of once, you just do it twice. Um, your solution zone changes a little bit because it's based on where both areas are, where they overlap. But other than that, it's really not that much of a stretch. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at this first example here. Okay. Uh, this is in the textbook. This is page 308. All right, so here is the problem, and I'll just read it out. All right, so a company makes two types of boats on a different assembly line, aluminum fishing boats and fiberglass rowing or bow riders, whatever that is. I'm not very much of a sailor, so I can't tell you. Okay, so what we know is we have two types of boats that we need to make here. Um, it says here, uh, both assembly lines are running at full capacity. A maximum of 20 boats per day can be made. So that's the most they can make. If they're going flat out all day, they'll make 20 boats. What they also know is, is that the, the demand for fiberglass boats is greater than the demand for aluminum boats. So the company makes at least five more fiberglass boats than aluminum boats each day. All right, so five more. So that means if you make three um, aluminum boats, you're going to make eight fiberglass boats. Okay, so now based on this, we can come up with two equations and draw the lines out for them. All right, whenever you're dealing with systems, you're going to have more than one equation, so you're going to have more than one line on your graph. So the first step is to always come up with your equations first. Okay, I always, you know, do x and y, and I say what they are. So I say let x equal um, fiberglass boats, okay? And I'm gonna say let y equal aluminum boats. All right, so now based on that, we have to go through and look back at the information here that was given to us in the question. So we know when both assembly lines are running at full capacity, a maximum of 20 boats can be made per day. So that means when you add up all your fiberglass boats plus all your aluminum boats, the most it can be is 20. So that means this will be less than or equal to 20. Okay. Now we also know it said um, the company makes at least five more fiberglass boats than aluminum boats every day. So that means if you take... Um, if you add up your aluminum boats, so Y, you're going to have to add 5 to that. And that's going to be less than or equal to your fiberglass boats, right? So what this saying is, your fiberglass boats are greater than or equal to aluminum plus 5. Alright, so it's at least that amount. It could be more. So that's what we know so far, okay? Now that we have these two equations, we can graph them. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll draw out a Cartesian plane. I'm just gonna scroll down here and draw it out. And then I'll come back up. I hope this isn't too confusing to follow, guys. Sorry, I'm trying this on an iPad for the first time. And so you have your X's and your Y's. Okay. Um, so now when you're graphing these equations, the easiest way to do it is if you remember from math 10, remember the formula y equals mx plus b. m here represents your slope, b represents your y-intercept, okay? And this is your slope. So what we can do now is we can take this information, we can rearrange these two equations 
um, and get them in this. Basically, you just want to get y by itself. So to do that, all you have to do is you would just rewrite this as um, uh, you know what? Never mind with that. The easier way easier way to do this. I'm gonna change my mind. Don't write that down. Is you're gonna find the x and y intercepts. Okay, oh, that's hard to read. Okay, so the x and y intercepts, remember, so the y intercept, we know that x equals zero. So looking at our first equation here, put a number one there above it. So if we look at that and if we make x equal to zero, we're gonna have zero plus y equals 20. So we know if x is zero, y equals 20. So my first point is at zero and 20. And then you also do the same thing for the x-intercept, right? At the x-intercept, you know that y equals zero. So you put zero in and you're gonna have x is greater than or equal to 20. So my other point would be at 20 and zero. Okay, so that's for line number one. So what I'll do is I'll come down and I will write that out. Now remember to set your, um, your scales on your axes, like so. So this is gonna be five, 10, 15, 20. And we'll do the same thing along x, five, 10, like so. And then all I'm going to do is I am going to plot uh, my x and y intercepts. So I know for the first line, I had it at 20. And my y intercept was at 20. And my x intercept was at 20. Now this is going to get a whole lot messy because I don't have a smart board to write on. But then I would draw my line. Now remember, it's greater than or equal to, so that means we include the line. So I'm drawing now a solid line, okay? So I draw my solid line like that. Ooh, that's nice and straight. Good job, Mr. Weber. And I would do my check, okay, which way do I shade? If I put now, remember the check you put in any point that's not on the line, I'm gonna put zero and zero in right here. So if I put zero plus zero, is that less than or equal to 20? Yes, it is, so I shade this way, okay? Now I do the same thing again for this, for number two here. I'll change colors and show my work for that one. Okay, so for the x-intercept, remember y equals zero. So if I put that in, I'm gonna have five greater than or equal to x. Okay, so my first point would be at five and zero. Ooh, that's convenient. And then I'll, what I'll do then is I'll put in my next point. So I'll make x equal to zero. And then that's gonna give me, um, plus five, it's greater than or equal to zero. So if I bring the five over, y is negative five. So that would be down here, okay? So now I connect those lines and I draw a straight line through. Beautifully done. Okay, so this is my graph. Now I'm not gonna worry about anything down here, okay, just because I'm making boats and everything below that would be negative. I can't have negative boats. So all I do is I just worry about everything above the y-axis, this stuff in here, okay? Um, that's what's nice about these questions because everything's dealing with negative or positive values. You typically only have to deal with everything in this quadrant only, okay? So otherwise you don't have to worry about it. 
So now I need to figure out for this one, what, which way am I shading? So again, if I put zero and zero in, so I go zero plus five is less than or equal to zero. Is five less than or equal to zero? No, that's not true. So I'm shading this way. All right, so these are my answers. Now, the only thing left to do I think that's it for this one. Yeah, so this is, the, that's it. Where these two lines meet, that is your answers in there. Okay, so any numbers that you can put in here. You can solve for this point here as well. What you would do is you would do substitution and put these two equations into one another. Let's see here. I'll show you quickly. So you know here that x has to be greater than or equal to y plus 5. So what you could do, this is back from grade 10, is you would substitute this value in for x in that equation. And you're going to get something like this. y plus 5 uh, plus y. So that's from the one equation, we plug it into the other one. It's going to be less than or equal to 20. And then you can solve. So it becomes 2y plus 5 equals 20, and you just solve for y then. So seven and a half. So what that means is this point here where they meet, your y value is at 7.5. And then you plug that in, this y value here, into either one of these equations. And that'll tell you what this next one is. So like, remember, you make at least five more of the other boat. So if you added five to that, that's going to be at roughly 12.5. Okay, so those are your answers there. Basically though, you don't have to worry too much about this point here yet. Notice how it's a decimal and it's kind of ugly. Later on down the road, we'll get into questions where it works out much nicer. That's what's really nice about these questions. They tend to graph pretty nicely. Okay, so as long as right now, you don't have to worry so much about this part here. I'm more worried that you can draw the two lines and know where to shade over and everything. Okay, let's look at another example here. Um, no, same one. Okay, this is example two on page 312. All we're gonna do, there's no word problem here, we're just gonna graph these two lines and see where it goes, okay? So, um, let's begin. So I'm just gonna rewrite them out. So I had three X plus two Y is greater than negative 6. And then I had y is greater than or equal to 3. All right, so for this one, we can do the x and y intercepts again. So my x-intercept, y equals 0. So then I'm left with 3x is greater than negative 6. So my x value there, or my x-intercept would be negative 2. Now I know I had just said that we'll only graph positive values, but because there's no word problem to this question, right? This is just straight up equations. We're not dealing with like numbers of boats or anything like that. You can have negative values. So I've just totally contradicted myself, which is cool because I do it all the time. All right, so now we find the y intercept. We make x equal to zero and we solve. So then we have two y y equals 3. So my two points here would be at negative 2 and 0, and then 0 and negative 3. 
and then I have this equation here. All right, so we'll graph this like so. Sorry, once again, on an iPad, this isn't ideal, but I'm making do with what we have. Okay, so my two points are at negative two and zero, so that's, I'll switch colors even. So my first one's at negative two and zero, which goes there. My next one's at negative three and zero. So my first line goes like that. And now to shade, I'll put zero and zero in. I'm just gonna write it up here above it just so you can see everything. So if I put zero in, that becomes zero plus zero is greater than six, negative six. Zero is greater than negative six. So I shade towards zero, zero, like this. All right, now my next one was y is greater than, or sorry, y is less than or equal to three. All that is is just a straight line, okay? All I know is, is that y is at three. So all I do is I just graph it like that. You know what, I'll make that a separate color too. All right, and now it says here, y is less than negative three, or less than three. So everything less than three is just down here. All right, so these are all my possible solutions in here. And that's all you got to do for that one. There's nothing really else to find and solve for. So that's all you're doing today is you're just going to graph your two lines, figure out the proper way to shade, and just shade in between the area that they have in common. And that's it. All right. So from this video, I would recommend... Um, I would do questions six to ten on page three eighty one. Or sorry, three eighteen. All right, cool.